What's up everybody, it's your boy Trayvon here with Centaur TV and today I'm going to do a fragrance review on three cheapies from the house of Manos de Fago. Now these fragrances are underrated and smells, have very, very, very good scent profiles. You know, in terms of the way that it smells, but uh, nobody's really mentioning and talking about these cheapies. You know, for as, as best of my knowledge, I don't know anybody that's talking about them, but you know, without further ado, let's just jump into it. So, from the house of Manos de Fago, we have Manos de Fago Al Rojo Vivo, Ultraviolet, and Fugo Azul. So, we're going to start off with the red Manos de Fago. Now, none of these have any type of note breakdowns online. I just searched all over the place can't find anything on these fragrances but if any of you know any type of note breakdowns or any information on these fragrances please leave a link or anything with any type of information you know pertaining to these fragrances as far as note breakdowns in the comment section below so what do i get out of this one this one is pretty nice you know you get this candy red type of a spice but initially in the opening you get like this fruity you know white musky type of a um stench like from the muskiness it has like some type of animalic type of a freshness that's not too noticeable but it's there and it's a little bit linear but it's there but mainly what you get out of this one is a candy red type of a fruity aspect to this fragrance initially in the opening when it dries down, it's still maintaining that candy red type of a sweetness, but also in the opening, it does comes off a little bit of a fresh spicy type of a chord with that candy red type of a sweetness. But as it dries down, that candy red like sweetness, that fruitiness, you know, transitions into the dry down and it's still maintaining that vibe of that uh, candy red fruitiness and stuff like that. But then, you know, that animalic type of a touch that you smell initially that's linear kind of fade fades away quite fast so when it completely dries down though you know that uh attractive captivating type of candy red fruitiness and sweetness kind of it transitions all the way to the dry down but it fades away quite it, it not fast but it fades away a little bit but then you get this animalic type of refreshness that creeps in with it i know this sounds a little bit off you got animalic freshness, then you got candy-like sweetness, but let me tell you, they mix very well with each other. You know, it's not a mind-blowing type of a factor of a scent, but it does smell pretty nice. And the longevity on this was average. You know, I get a good, I got a good like four to five hours, but you, if you want more, just overspray, hold yourself down with this, because if you want any type of, you know, beastly longevity that's what probably but that's what you're probably going to have to do but overall scent profile like a fresh spicy you know candy red candy red fruity scent that i do enjoy this fragrance reminds me of from victor and rolf uh spice bombs uh infrared you know it doesn't entirely remind me of that fragrance you know because you know that fragrance is definitely obviously you know more high quality but this is more of a watered down version of that fragrance so if you don't want to spend like you know full retail on spice bomb infrared and you see this i think this would be a good art alternative or is a day that you want to smell like infrared but you don't want to wear the quality infrared from victor and roth and you want to just snag this bad boy and pick this up and spray you know make a quick move and you don't want it to linger around on your skin that long, this is a good alternative for that fragrance. I forgot to mention the projection. The projection was okay between like, you know, 30, 45 minutes to an hour, then set close to the skin after that. But like I said, like four to five hours is basically what I got max. Uh, if you overspray, you might get more, but yeah, there's that. Seasons to wear this, I will say this is more of a warmer, well not warm, like cold weather, you know, like fall, winter time, you know, early spring where it's a little bit cool, but by, based off this fragrance not being a beast, and you wear this in like, you know, where it's, the heat is kind of amped up a little bit, I don't think it'd be too cloying, but I would say if you were to wear this in the summertime, I'd say wear this like in the, in the nighttime, 
And uh, because it does have a little bit more of a like sweetness, like a candy like sweetness that's a little bit bold and a little slightly too heavy for like the high heat. But I think you should you can pull it off in the summertime as well. Age group doesn't matter if you like it, rock it, but specifically I will say this is more for like you know the younger guys to middle age. You know, it does have, you know, type of a masculine type of an animalic accord that's underneath all that sweetness, that candy-like sweetness for, you know, the older gen gentlemen to pull it off. But this is more suited for, like, you know, the, uh, the younger age group to middle age. But if you're an older gentleman, if you like it, rock it. Doesn't matter. I failed to mention the price. This ran me $10 and some change at Macy's Backstage area. And I forgot to show off the atomizer. The atomizer... It's average. It's not good. It's not bad either. It's where it needs to be for a cheap. Moving right along, we're going to go with Menos de Fago Ultraviolet. Here is the bottle. Got the size and concentration as well as the name of the house and the name of the fragrance at the bottom. Here is the bottom of the first one. I forgot to show that off too. The atomizer on Ultraviolet is... Oh. For some reason, it's a little bit better than the first one for some odd reason, but I do like that uh, push from the atomizer. Most deaf. This fragrance also ran me $10 and some change. So initially, what do I get out of here? I get like this linear, like lemon creamy type of an aspect to this fragrance that smells quite nice. It's fresh, spicy, has like this creamy lemon type of a cord that comes off in the opening. But as it dries down, you do get like that violet aspect, hence the name ultraviolet. You do get that later on in the fragrance as it, as it persists on your skin. You do get some type of a powdery type of a lavender uh, uh, accord, you know, in a longevity when she creep into the mid, but that lemon creaminess that you get in the initial opening does maintain itself quite a bit, but it does, the freshness, the fresh spiciness kind of lingers away just a little bit in the creamy uh, lemon aspect kind of it's kind of a, a tart lemon too tart lemon type of a creamy aspect to the fragrance it does persist long on your skin as it goes to the mid but as it dries down though as it dries down though you do maintain that lemon accord that lemon creaminess accord all the way through the top mid into the dry down but once you get into the dry down you do get some type of woodsy type of a spice and that powderiness that you get from like that powdery masculine white floral type of aspect in the mid it does mesh very well with each other so overall overall you just get this you know this powder powdery lemon creamy type of aspect with some fresh spicy woods in a base which i do enjoy quite a bit now if i were to pick between the this bad boy this one i would choose as far as scent wise i would choose this one even though this is a clone of a, you know, a designer fragrance that I do enjoy quite a bit, but it's something about this one. I also have a lady friend that actually dig this scent quite a bit. Even though it might come off as a little bit more linear, but as it persists on your skin, it does get a little bit more bolder, and it does push out quite nicely in terms of, you know, mild conditions outside, you know. I wouldn't wear this in the, uh, well, it doesn't have a lot of bold sweetness like you know for like a fall or winter time uh, fragrance but you can pull this off in you know you know high heat situations and it probably won't be too corny you know because it is not a beast it's not loud or anything like that it's quite quiet you know into your intimate area but you know if heat hits this i think it'll push out and project a little bit more not to the point where it's cloying or you know aggravating to you or anybody else around you so i will say this is a good you know you know, summer scent that's like, you know, 80, 85 around there. Not like high heat situations where it's like 100 plus, but you know, to those degrees, you know, 80 to 85 at least. Seasons to rock this, I will say, you know, you know, summer, I think you can wear this like, it's versatile in all type of uh, uh, seasons. I, in my opinion, you know, based off the way that it smells, it's like, it's not too loud. It's not too linear. You're not, it's not obnoxious. doesn't have any bold sweetness. You know, it, it's like right in the middle where it needs to be. You know, I say it's versatile in all seasons. You can wear it any type of seasons, any all year round, basically. Performance on here, it's not too good, you know. It's like little, it's like a cut, like below average just a little bit. 
you know, if you overspray, you'll get like, you know, at least like a solid average performance. But if you don't, you know, this sits quite close to your skin, you know. Projection was good within like 30, between 30 minutes to an hour, set close to the skin. After that, give me the total longevity of, again, like four to five hours. You know, not too, not too bad. It's not good either. You know, it's right in between, slightly uh, below average. But if you want a nice amount of decent projection and longevity, like I say, hold yourself down with this and you might get that. But scent profile wise, it's gorgeous. I like how this smells. I choose this one over the infrared clone. Age group, I think this is uh, pretty much a good, has a nice amount of versatility as far as age group, you know. It's not too masculine, it's not too sweet. It, it's, it's right where it needs to be in terms of versatility. So I think it is like all year round you can wear this and pretty much any age group can wear this too. So last but not least, we got Manos de Fago. Fago Azul. Just like the other bottles, size and concentration, as well as the name of the house, as well as the name of the fragrance at the bottom at this sticker. This fragrance also ran me $10 and some change. The atomizer on here is pretty nice. You know, I don't know about the uh, the red bottle. It's something kind of average about that one, but those, the last two, it's pretty nice atomizers. So what do I get out of here? This one is a banger. I really do like this one. Out of the three, this one, then ultraviolet, then, you know, the infrared clone, the red bottle. But this one smells amazing. You know, you get this, I wanna say, it smells like something that I have in my collection already, but I cannot pinpoint what it is. But it smells so good. Fresh has like this like fresh, sweet, uh, like masculine modern day gentleman type of a smell that it doesn't smell synthetic at all like when I just smell what I just what I just sprayed it filled this whole area quite nicely the other two withered away quite fast but this one still lingers in the air I'm still smelling it getting wafts all over the place this is amazing smelling scent now I might be wrong. This kind of reminds me of a Calvin Klein's reveal, which is also which is discontinued. But it does have that unique bold aspect from that fragrance that I do have in my collection, thankfully. But it does smell similar to that fragrance, if I'm not mistaken. If it doesn't smell like that, it smells like something other in my collection that smells fantastic. But I really do enjoy this one. So my advice in terms of picking between the three and you find, and you can decide, I say do this one first. Pick the uh, Fugo Azul up first. This smells great. Has this bold, pungent freshness as well as some sweetness as, as well as it has like some type of woods and a slight like floral, masculine floral aspect, like I will say in the mid. But it overall, you just get this bold freshness that's sweet, fresh, and spicy. And it, it's night. Like, it sounds simple, but that's probably all you need to have a great fragrance. Is something simple, and this delivers quite nicely. So on my skin, when it comes to performance and longevity, the, the longevity and projection, uh, it was better than the other two. I'm not gonna lie to you. And. Uh, I really do dig the way that this smells and I'm glad that the longevity is quite up to par, which I expect it to be around average at least. So the projection was good within, you know, 45 minutes to an hour set close to the skin, giving a total longevity of a good five solid hours, maybe between five to six hours because I'm an over sprayer. So with this one, this pushes out quite nicely versus the other two. So if you were to pick between, you know, these, the, like the three, and you want like performance wise and smell wise, I'd say go with this one all day, every day. Because the way that this smells and the way it performs, and you can obviously, you should definitely, definitely, this is more oriented for, you know, high heat situations because it does have a good amount of freshness that it will adapt to the heat quite nicely and it will be absolutely no type of a cloying aspect to this whatsoever. So, yeah, 
If you find this one uh, versus the other ones, you are in luck. If you are interested in these three, go ahead and get this one first. So, Seasons to Rock This, I say this is versatile in all seasons because it does have a good, uh, a nice amount of subtle sweetness, some freshness, to be, to have some, a little bit more of a, you know, versatility to pull off in all aspects of the seasons. So, I say this has a nice versatility in seasons as well to pull off all year round. So, between these three, like I said plenty of times before, get this one, get this one, get that one, and get that one in that order. So that's all that I have for Centaur TV, ladies and gentlemen. As always, you know what to do. You gotta like, comment, share, and subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you do not miss anything. And I will see you guys in the next video. Be safe out there and be blessed. Have a good one. I'm out of here. Peace. Ooh.